everybody, and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. In today's video, we'll be hitting on some absolutely huge Wheel of Time related news stories. There's some television show news, tons of it actually, and then some information on the books straight from Brandon Sanderson's mouth. I'm excited to get to all of this. But before we get to the news, quick shout out to the channel's main sponsor, Audible.com. Audible is the main source for audiobooks. They have a recurring subscription service that will fill your library in no time. A lot of you have heard me say this before and maybe rolled your eyes, but I'll say it again. This is the perfect time to start a reread of the series as we work up to the launch of the television show next year. And audiobooks are a great way to do that reread. In fact, Amazon has announced a reread thing that they're doing themselves. Not a lot of information on that yet, but this is a great time to jump in. So if you've never done audiobooks, or specifically you've never done the Wheel of Time audiobooks, I highly recommend it. Make sure to let me know in the comments below what you think of the Wheel of Time audiobooks. But Audible is giving a very special gift to my viewers. If you head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nablus and sign up there, you'll get a free audiobook of your choice. So you can just pick up the eye of the world and start your reread. And just by doing so, you greatly help support the channel as well. The video today is going to have two sections that have different spoiler content. The first section will have a spoiler rating of yellow meaning non-plot based spoilers through the great hunt. I won't be talking about anything that will spoil the plot in any way, but some themes and general information about the first two books will be talked about. There will be a red spoiler section at the end of the video, and I'll throw up a new spoiler rating at that point to give you plenty of warning before we get to anything that is spoilerific. So let's go ahead and dive into the news, starting with some more potentially leaked set photos. This information comes courtesy of at Geeky Eerie on Twitter, someone whom I've mentioned here on the channel before. Geeky Eerie has been a pro at uncovering little pieces of information about the upcoming show, and these photos are potentially another one. The photos show a town or village near either a quarry or a mountainous area. The pictures have not been confirmed to be the Wheel of Time set, but this is from the Czech Republic and is an American production in the style of The Hobbit. Now, the set was confirmed to be up in the fall of 2019 and has since been taken down. So that would seem to indicate that this was filmed early on in the filming process, if it is the Wheel of Time set, that is. There aren't any other productions that we know of that match this style, so this may be safe to assume that this is Wheel of Time, but again, absolutely nothing confirmed. So let's assume for a second that this is a Wheel of Time set. What village or town could it be? Well, given the proximity to mountains or quarries and the wooden gate of sorts that you can see in one of the pictures, in addition to the fact that this would have been used very early on in the filming, my guess is that this is a section of Berlon. Obviously, they're not going to build a set for all of Berlon. It's a gigantic town, uh, but only the sections they need. So it could also be another small village that the characters come across in their travels. Let me know what you think of this potential village in the comments below and where you think it might be. The next piece of Wheel of Time related news is really just a confirmation of something that we already knew about the show but this time with a little bit more detail. It was previously known that Wayne Yip would be directing episodes of Wheel of Time's first season. Wayne is a fairly accomplished television director that I've mentioned in previous news videos. He's known for his work on Doctor Who, Into the Badlands, Preacher, Hunters, and Treadstone. He typically directs action-style drama shows. Well, the confirmation comes from WattSeries.com, an outstanding Wheel of Time television show news website. I'll have a link to that down in the description below. They have confirmed that Wayne Yip will be directing both episode 3 and 4 of the Wheel of Time television show. Probably a better way of putting this is Wayne has already directed those episodes, as they've very likely already been filmed and they're in post-production right now. The thing of particular note here for me is that he was chosen for those episodes, and he's typically an action-style director. So that leads me to believe that those episodes will contain significant action scenes or possibly a faster pace. Now, this next piece of news took some serious investigation, and again, I'm going to point back to WattSeries.com. They did some great work here with the help of Geeky Eerie and the Twitter user Camilla. So let's start with some background. Months ago, Amazon released a promotional video of the cast getting together for a table read of episodes one and two. There were many actors and actresses at that table uh, that had been announced, as well as many others that we didn't have any information on. So fans of the show scoured the video to figure out who the unnamed people were, and we discovered actually a few of them in the process. Michael Michelhatton was identified, for instance, long before we knew that he had been announced as Tam Althor. Well, they seem to have found the identity for the last unknown member of the table read. This gentleman sitting here between Michael McElatton and Helena Westerman is Australian actor Michael Tuohine. Apologize if I'm screwing that up, but Michael Tuohine has been in a number of smaller television roles, and to be clear, 
None of this is confirmed officially, and we do not know who he would be playing, but Narg from the Daily Trollocs speculated that he could be Bran Alvir, and I would tend to agree with that suggestion, even though he doesn't necessarily look the part that, you know, he isn't big boned. But I'm not sure that having Bran be fat or large is a deal breaker, and if he fits the other characteristics that they're going for in the show, then it makes sense. He and Madeline share a similar skin tone, and more importantly, a similar accent as they are both Australian. I'm certainly curious who you all think he could be. But WattSeries.com was not done, just discovering that he was at the table read. They were able to map out the room with all of the actors and actresses who we knew were at the table read, and they made this really cool graphic. Now, as I take a look at this, aside from me thinking that it's really cool, one thing that should have stood out to me before stands out to me even more now. Does anybody notice who is missing from this table read for episodes one and two that should be there if the book was being mirrored? I'll give you a second. So yeah, Alexandra Willem, the actor cast to play Tom Marilyn, is conspicuously missing from this table read. I'm not sure why I personally never noticed this before, but I'm sure you smart people did and I'm a dummy, but still it begs the question. Is Tom Marilyn not going to be around for the first two episodes? Now, despite it seeming obvious that he clearly isn't going to be based on this video, I'm actually thinking that this may be an incorrect assumption. Uh, Alexandra Willem actually had two separate TV series that he was filming around the same time, and they were wrapping up production around the start of the Wheel of Time filming. It's entirely possible that he was simply not able to make the first table read as a scheduling conflict, and someone else read his part. Again, this is entirely conjecture. For all we know, he could have been in the empty seat at the end uh, of the table next to Uta Bresowitz. But nevertheless, definitely some food for thought. So next up, something I found incredibly exciting, even though there wasn't a ton of bombshell news dropped, and that's Rafe Judkin's comments as a part of the Jordan Con Line t TV show panel that happened a couple weeks back. Matt Hatch, our good friend from the Dusty Wheel, and the popular theory website Theoryland hosted a panel of Wheel of Time community and content creators and their Zoom call was crashed by none other than Rafe Judkins himself. Now, if you aren't familiar, Rafe is the showrunner for the Wheel of Time TV show adaptation on Amazon. We got to hear directly from him, and he did actually give us some stuff to think about. I've linked the entire video in the description below, and I highly recommend that you go check it out yourself and watch it in its entirety, as it's a lot of fun, but I'll break down some of the main takeaways from Rafe's comments. One thing Rafe did tell us that we didn't get previous confirmation of is that we'd be getting eight episodes for not only season one, but also season two, which he says he has almost finished writing with the writing team. Now this is really cool news for a couple reasons. To hear him talk about it, the second season is totally an assumption, not something that he seemed to fear would happen. So that's a major sign that Amazon has a lot of confidence in the project. Secondly, he tells us the number of episodes it seems that they're going to be aiming for in each season. Rafe also went on to say that he jumped at the opportunity to run the Wheel of Time television show production out of an intense burden to do it right. He knew that if he didn't do it, someone else who didn't love the book series as much and didn't understand the series would make the show instead. Hearing the conviction in his voice as he talks about this was seriously incredibly relieving to me. Uh, I felt like most of the moves that they've made have been good ones, but hearing him talk about why he decided to take on the Wheel of Time makes me trust that this show is in the right hands. He talked about how they want to honor the spine and heart of the books while also having to adapt mediums. He said he views his role as a protector of what makes the Wheel of Time the Wheel of Time. He talks about how he uses Harriet McDougall, Maria, who was Robert Jordan's assistant, and Brandon Sanderson as a gateway to what Robert Jordan thought and believed. And he has been strict about learning the proper pronunciations and lore from the old interviews with Robert Jordan, as well as access to his team to attempt to maintain and honor the vision that Robert Jordan had while adapting it to television. Rafe also briefly talked about the cast and the level of bonding between the main cast members. He told a story about Marcus Rutherford, Yasha Stradowski, and, and Barney Harris, the actors playing Perrin, Matt, and Rand, respectively, all renting a car behind production's back and driving off to do their own thing during a shoot. Rafe says that he saw Yasha driving with Marcus riding shotgun and then Barney in the back seat hiding, as you might expect Matt to. Hearing him tell a story like this just brought a smile to my face. It was kind of fun to hear. Lastly, another thing that Rafe talked about and that I will highlight are some of the themes of the books and then also of the show. Rafe said that largely the same themes from the books will be a part of the show. That includes balance, fate, and destiny as he sees it, all of which are major themes in the books. Now, Rafe said something that I'm sure many will be happy to hear, and that's that they're not planning to explore any themes that are not explored in the books. They are not planning on injecting a different message or modern theme into the story. I know lots of people are worried that they're gonna be pumping modern themes and messaging 
uh, and pushing that into the story to get a narrative across. So those of you who were really worried about that, there you go. Before moving on for there, I will mention uh, one thing that was answered in the comments during the, the live stream by Sarah Nakamura, and this was a question that I had asked. I asked if Rafe had any say about whether the show would be dropped weekly or all at once. Sarah replied that Rafe had a great deal of control over that, and likely would make that decision. I personally wasn't sure if that was gonna be like decreed by Amazon or if the production would get to make that decision, but I'm certainly gonna be campaigning for a weekly release uh, that can be promoted and talked about uh, sort of like The Mandalorian uh, or Game of Thrones. The last thing I wanna move on to is an interview with Brandon Sanderson that my good friend, the innkeeper from The Dusty Wheel did on his channel last month. But before we get into some of the nuggets from that interview, let me throw up a new spoiler warning. The rest of the video is gonna carry a spoiler rating of red, uh, with spoilers all the way through A Memory of Light. If you have not read all of the books, go ahead and stop now if you don't want anything spoiled for you. So we're going to be diving into some of the comments made by Brandon Sanderson on The Dusty Wheel last month. I'm going to have a link to the entire video below, and you should absolutely go check that out and watch the whole thing. It's really awesome. And just to be clear, there's still going to be plenty for you to see. I am not going to recap the entire thing or every word that he said, but rather I'm just going to give my thoughts on a couple things that Brandon said. You should absolutely go watch the entire video. It's a really a great interview, and there's a deleted scene from The Towers of Midnight read by Michael Kramer that is worth your time. So getting into it, if you weren't aware of who Brandon Sanderson is, he's an extremely popular fantasy author who is arguably one of the best modern fantasy writers out there right now. Uh, he's known for the Mistborn series, the Stormlight Archive, as well as most importantly to the Wheel of Time fans is he was the author that was chosen to finish the series after the death of Robert Jordan. One thing that absolutely stands out to me every time I hear Brandon talk or give his opinion is how very direct and honest he is, and he tends to share as much as he can. A couple of the major points that Brandon hit on are that he's very excited for the show and that he has read all of the scripts as he's just been serving as a script consultant. Now there's very little that he can share, but he did give his opinion on adapting the books. When asked what fears he might have about the TV series, Brandon gave kind of a different answer. He acknowledges that it's hard for him to answer that question because he's already read all the scripts and he's been on the sets. But he says if he pretended that he hadn't read them, then what he would be afraid of would be that they couldn't fit it all into one season. But since the adaptation moved originally from being a movie to a television show, and now that he's read the scripts, he thinks that they will get it all in. So first of all, I want to say I am putting on my tinfoil hat here and reading a little bit into his words, but the implication that he wasn't sure that they would get it all in, and now he is after reading the scripts, implies to me that they might be leaning heavier into season one being closer to book one. Uh, it wouldn't make a lot of sense for me to for him to be worried about getting a book and a half, for instance, into one season or something like that. So maybe our thoughts on a book and a half being in season one are wrong. He also stated his other fear is that it would be campy like other fantasy or science fiction shows have been. But again, he says after seeing the scripts and being on the sets, he has absolutely zero fears that it's going to be campy, which is really heartening to me because that was one of my big fears. I think a big turnoff for most mainstream audiences to fantasy or sci-fi is that campiness, like bad dialogue or really cheesy or lack of anything graphic. Brandon then goes on to say that his other fear is that he wouldn't be able to show his kids the show based on the content. He said he isn't sure what directions or decisions they're going to make here. Which we really haven't had a lot of clarity from Rafe about whether there's going to be a lot of nudity, although we have seen casting that calls for nudity. We don't know if there will be sex. We don't know where or what level they're going to ramp the violence up to. I know if they do make it uh, a very direct interpretation from the books, it should be a very, very violent, dark series. Brandon also gave a bit of clarity into his role with the show. He basically says that he's a script consultant. He reads the scripts and gives feedback to Rafe on what he thinks about the writing and what he thinks fans will think about the scripts. He says that it's not a constant dialogue with Rafe. They're not talking all the time, but more of a reaction to it, and it's a bit back and forth. Uh, but he does say Rave has the final say on all of it. Brandon's overall impression on the production and the script so far, he's overwhelmingly positive on the show so far, but with one or two large issues that he thinks could be potentially divisive to hardcore fans. Now, obviously, Brandon couldn't say what those were, but he did say one of those issues he really doesn't care for. Now, that being said, he's 100% supportive of Rafe as the showrunner and is totally behind him and believes that he is the right person for the job. He says that we're going to get Rafe's vision for the show, not a Brandon Sanderson vision and not a Robert Jordan vision, but that isn't a bad thing. No one could give the Robert Jordan vision except for Robert Jordan. 
So after saying all that, he goes on to later say that there really isn't that much different and that this still feels like the Wheel of Time despite some of the changes. He clarifies that really the only the hardcore fans are going to be upset with some of the changes, but he just happens to be more conscious of what the diehards might be thinking. The example that he gives to explain this is the hardcore Lord of the Rings fans that were very upset about the scouring of the Shire being cut from the movies as well as Tom Bombadil. So let's stop and analyze his comments for a minute. After hearing it live, here's what I think. Brandon is aware that some fans don't want to see a single thing changed, and he's telling us that there are going to be changes and some fans aren't going to like them. He hasn't said that the changes will be hated or that people won't like what they get. In fact, he says quite the opposite, saying that he's overwhelmingly positive on the show so far. I think Brandon is saying here that he is overly sensitive to what some of the hardcore fans might think, given that he finished the books, uh, so he had to deal with that before, and that he isn't saying that he agrees with every change they're making, uh, but to me, everything he says and the way that he talks about Rafe makes me feel very good about the direction of the show. In regards to the cast, Brandon said that he hasn't had super long conversations with any of them, with the exception of Barney Harris, who's playing Matt. He says that he talked to Barney for quite a while about Matt as a character. Barney apparently sought him out to talk and asked him a ton of questions. I absolutely love this, and I can give my own small story concerning Barney. I haven't shared this publicly, really, because I didn't want to break any trust, but I think at this point it's probably okay to share. Very early on, right after the first casting, Barney Harris reached out to me on Twitter and asked me a little bit about Matt and what I thought he should know about Matt as he started to prepare for the role. We didn't talk long, and I gave him just some general impressions that I had of Matt. What strikes me about this, though, is how intent Barney is to get it right. Hearing that he grabbed Brandon and talked to him about Matt just makes me feel great knowing how seriously he is taking his character that he's reaching out to all these different sources to get an idea of what Matt's character looks like. It's just really exciting to me. One side note that I thought was interesting, Barney hinted at the fact back then that they all had watched some of the content that YouTube creators had put out there about the show and the characters, and that was pretty cool for me to see, just knowing that they had watched some of the stuff that we had made. Now, Brandon didn't talk uh, all about the show, though. Uh, he did get to some talk about the books, which I found incredibly interesting. He was asked about magic systems and his love for various... You know, he loves to create magic systems and teaches on it, actually, uh, at BYU. And he has a creative head for thinking about how to use the magic systems in different worlds. And he said that while he was reading The Wheel of Time, he used to think of creative uses for the weaves, and gateways always fascinated him. So when he got a chance to write the books, he let himself go nuts with Andral to kind of satisfy that curiosity or interest in gateways. So it was really cool to hear about how Andral kind of got the status that he got in the books, and that was really a Brandon Sanderson creation and his own creative ideas from when he was reading The Wheel of Time. One thing I loved hearing him say, though, was that what he would have changed about the end of the books, and he said, number one, he would change Pot on Fane's ending. He knows that he could have been given more to do in the final book in hindsight, uh, which is kind of cool for him to hear because it's something that I know a lot of people weren't quite satisfied with that ending for Pot on Fane. If you watch my interview with Mike's book reviews uh, the other day, you can go back and watch that video if you want. We talked a little bit about this, how it's just kind of like all this build up and then at the end it's just kind of what did he do, right? And so it was really cool to hear Brandon kind of acknowledge that. He was also asked uh, if one of Asham and Jer Grady's sons was Guy Kane, something that fans had kind of long speculated. His answer is that he didn't really know, uh, that he wrote that in there to seed it as a possibility, that there was never anything explicit written about who uh, Guy Kane was. I thought it was really cool to uh, hear him say that as he's kind of setting it up as, hey, it's a possibility. Brandon also spoke about Damondred as being one of his favorite characters to write, he was asked what Demandra did to inspire a group of people like the Sharans to follow him, and I thought Brandon's answer here was really cool. Uh, he talked about Demandra being so great that he could have been the hero. He was so close to real glory and respect, but he always lets jealousy destroy him. He was likable and powerful, and had been on a journey in the books uh, becoming the leader of the Sharans that could have had an entire six-book series written about him on his own. Brandon said he really wanted to set him up as a parallel to Rand, but ultimately making the selfish and jealous choices at the end rather than the right one. He could have led the Sharns to fight the Trollocs and been the savior and the hero of the last battle, but instead he let his jealousy of Luce there and Telamon completely destroy him. Brandon uh, just regretted that he ran out of time, basically, in the books to truly explore Demondred's character, and he wishes he could have done more. I really loved that arc, and you can see the seeds of what Brandon had in mind for him, especially after reading River of Souls, which I highly recommend all of you read. River of Souls is a short story about Demondred gaining the Sakarnan that was included in the Unfettered Anthology. You should absolutely check that out. Uh, you can find it online, just Google it. 
There's a ton of other stuff that was covered in the interview, and I highly recommend that you go check out the interview on the Dusty Wheel channel and give them a subscription as well. Uh, they're a really awesome channel. It's a really cool theme and a really uh, cool set of interviews and content that they've got over there. So absolutely give them a subscription. I'll have that linked in the description below. But what did you guys think of the news? Does all this stuff have you more or less excited for the Wheel of Time TV show? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Check out the Patreon if you want to support what I do here on the channel. And thanks to all of you that already do support me. Ad revenue is dropping like crazy on YouTube. And those of you that are able to support on Patreon are so, so appreciated. Thanks again for watching, everybody. And until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on the rope of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free crying. Tinker, oh dear, Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?